Okay, so if that intro is what opening World of Warcraft feels like to you, I've got good news. We can help you. We can actually make it look a little bit more like this. I think we can all agree is a hell of a lot better. Now, by the way, that's real results. There's no trickery here, right? This is just a genuine, massive improvement in load times for the game, both in that eternal first login, but also when you're taking the four to five teleports that uh, it takes to get anywhere these days. I mean, just look at these graphs. These graphs could be you. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. What we did is we used a really nifty add-on called Warm Up, right? Warm Up essentially benchmarks the impact of add-ons and things like that on your loading times. And by doing testing and also trying out some in-game console commands, we were able to half loading times, and in one case, even take a loading time from 15 seconds to half a second, which is absolutely mad. And we're able to do that because we loaded up on today's sponsor, the Galaxy Projector 2.0, which is just plain cool. It'll transform your room, and uh, in my case, actually, uh, well, we use it for sleep. It's really nice and relaxing. We turn the brightness down uh, just a little bit lower. We play white noise, and uh, for whatever reason, the mixture, Galaxy Projector is visuals, the white noise, it's just very calming. It helps you wind down, which, uh, well, this is good for me because sleep's always been a struggle. So here's how things work. You've got RGB colors, which are giving you this gorgeous nebula, and then essentially a field of stars, the, uh, the green or the blue laser. Now you can control those colors, you can control the brightness, the rotation speed, and just kind of watching it all dance around your wall at sort of different rates because of the angle of the projection. It's just one of those kind of mesmerizing things. And that essentially means you can customize it to your liking, be it big or rich, or maybe a little bit more low key for sleep. The point is that's all very, very easy to do with their app or also with assistants like Alexa or Google, so it can be hands-free. It's very energy efficient. You can set on off timers and that sort of thing. And since it uses USB power, if you need to take it somewhere else or want to just use it in another room or don't want to be limited by where there are plug sockets, well, you just put it into a battery bank. Really handy. So if this is all interesting to you, then head to galaxylamps.co forward slash Bellular Warcraft and use code Bellular Warcraft where you'll get 15% off. So thanks to Galaxy Lamps for sponsoring. And with that said, let's hop in. Now, before I dive in, there is one thing that I've got to explain to you first. There are, and this is grossly simplified, so devs, please don't hate on us, two things that you need to load in World of Warcraft. The first thing is the game UI, and the second thing is the actual game world. And that actually gives us three types of loading screen, if you're loading both, just the UI, and just the game. Now, when you log into your character for the first time, you load both. You load just your UI whenever you type in slash reload, and you'll load just the game, we'll call this zoning, when whenever you happen to take a portal into a zone or a dungeon or a raid. Now, your very first load into World of Warcraft can be the most brutal, right? I mean, we've been getting load times into Valdrakin of 14, maybe 15 seconds, and we could even push it all the way up to 24 seconds. Now, this may not seem like the biggest deal. I mean, what's a few seconds? Especially if you think about, say, an hour of playing the game. But do you know what it is? It's just a bit frustrating to be stuck at loading screens, especially, say, with Noble Garden, if you are doing alt switching all the time. Right, here's how we did it and the testing data. Testing data from a lot of hours sitting watching loading screens and transcribing numbers. First up then, let's talk about the UI loading. So your UI loading time is basically determined by one thing add-ons. So as step one, we removed each installed add-on one at a time, and then we tracked the impact that doing that had in our loading time based on warm-ups reported time loading the UI into Valdraken. And this is what our load times looked like. And as it turns out, almost every single add-on did add a little bit of time to our loading. Most of them were between 0.4 and 0.6 seconds, but you can see, right? There's some big jumps and there's some minor jumps. So let's get to explaining those. The minor jumps don't really matter that much. I mean, you can chalk a lot of that up to just small amounts of uh, statistical noise, right? The big jumps though, those are a lot more interesting. Uh, like the massive jump at the end, that's what happened when we removed weak auras. Yes, removing weak auras cut a good six seconds off our load times, but that is a special case. More on how to fix that later. 
So, with less add-ons equals faster loading being a certain thing, the next step was to isolate them, and this is the result following that. A graph showing each add-on's impact on load times. You can see weak ores is the worst by far, with LVI, details, all the things, Plater, Pratt, BTW quests, and Altaholic all adding over a second each, and things like DBM, Narcissus Dialog UI, and other smaller add-ons actually barely being noticeable until you combine loads of them and they do add up. So, to cut down how long your UI takes to load, shockingly, remove stuff from your UI. If your add-on folder looks a little bit like this, maybe it's time to do the needful. But, I may hear you ask, what if you like your add-ons and you don't want to give them up? Well, there is a solution to that. It's just one part of the puzzle though, because we will have to cover zoning soon. There are some settings I can guarantee you will have never heard of before, and they have a big impact. Back to add-ons though. So, what we're going to do to get around this problem is use add-on profiles. Simple add-on manager is, ironically, another add-on, but what it does do is it lets us save add-on profiles and then with just a few clicks, load them. Uh, with a profile for just, say, logging in to do some world quests, another one for raiding, and, well, another for whatever else you might want to do, be it pet battles, mythic plus, roleplay, transmog, treasure collecting, whatever whatever it is, you can just take maybe 10 minutes to slice and dice your add-on setup, and that'll be that. Just make sure, of course, that you make your lightest profile of add-ons be the one that is on by default, and then when you need more add-ons, when you need those other features, well, you'll already have a profile saved. As an example, here is what we put together. Basically, only loading certain add-ons on demand, and you can do this across your characters as well. So, this is really convenient. But the next thing is weak auras, and to make a long story short, the more weak auras you have, the longer it takes to load. I mean, as an add-on, weak auras is spectacularly capable. It is a truly astounding thing. It can do a lot. But the thing is, even if the auras that you have are themselves not loading, the more of them you have, the slower the add-on will be to load. So as an example, we had a bunch of Luxthrosis weak ores for a whole bunch of different classes installed, and when we just removed them one by one, the UI loading times went down a little bit. This graph actually shows the impact. And you can see that some lightweight weak ores basically don't have much impact, like the raid buff tracker or the raidability timeline. But as soon as we started removing the real chunky class weak ores, you can just see that the times just drop. Now, this is not a dig at Lockstros, by the way. His weak aura packs are absolutely some of the best out there. The amount of work that he puts into that to just give these resources to the community is, it's laudable. It's amazing. This is not a dig. But yes, in covering everything, weak auras just takes its time to load, right? It, it does a lot. I think that that's understandable. Now, on top of that, even with zero add-ons installed, Weak Ores itself does add a solid two seconds in our experience, so maybe, unless you're in a Raid or a Mythic Plus profile, just uh, don't load Weak Ores at all. Okay, now the maybe even more important part of testing. We are going to talk about how to decrease your loading times when you move between zones, as an example, using a portal. And how many times in WoW are we portaling to somewhere to then portal to somewhere else, right? Or just zoning into dungeons. We do this shit a lot, feels a bit more buttery, that's just nice. And to cut to the chase on that one, we found two major factors that impacted this. Non-critical preloading and view distance. So, using an add-on that is called Advanced Interface Options, and I know it's an add-on, but still, using it, we were able to look at some settings that actually change how World of Warcraft loads in the world. There's non-critical preloading, player model preloading, and high-res texture preloading. So what we did is we turned those off in different combinations, and we found the only one that actually changed anything noticeable was World Preload Non-Critical. If you set that to zero, from the default of two, well, at least in our case, it caught our zone loading times by almost half, with no downside that we could see. The Stormwind to Val Draken portal, it went from almost eight seconds to taking four and a half seconds. The one to Stormwind dropped to under three seconds from over four seconds. Of course, Stormwind is a more simple place assets-wise. But take the Ruby Life Pulse, our test dungeon for today's video. That went from an eight second loading time to three seconds. So if you want to drastically reduce your loading times, install advanced interface options, search for world preload non-critical, and set that sucker to zero. You could also, by the way, just type in slash console set 
world preload non-critical, zero. And, uh, well, if you do that, then congratulations, you don't need advanced interface options. But advanced interface options is actually a really cool add-on that just gives you a lot more behind-the-hood access. The next thing we found was in testing the graphics settings of WoW. So, just dropping the overall preset down, right? It resulted in this graph. I mean, yeah, it's kind of obvious, right? Lower graphics means faster loading. But that's not really that useful, so we tried to find out what setting is actually impacting this. Instinct, of course, just said view distance. We tested that, and yeah, we were right in the money. At least mostly. So, we didn't test everything individually because that would have taken dozens of hours, and we immediately landed on the most useful bit, how you can actually fix the problem and reduce your loading times. But to get a general idea of how much other things impacted it, we did do a bunch of different tests with the view distance fixed at max, and you can basically see that it's it's quite negligible. So, the number one piece of advice is this. Don't have your view distance set to max. I mean, look at the damage that it does to your zoning in times, and really not for that much gain. We found that the view distance of 5 is fine, 7 rides the perfect line, I think, for most people, between fast loading and seeing a big, beautiful world. Personally, I keep mine at 8, this one's really up to your own discretion, but just know that really, beyond 5, it is actually making quite a difference. Now, our next piece of advice is this. It's probably worth knocking your graphic settings down just a little bit. Personally, I do lowball my graphic settings a little bit. It's just because even though in many circumstances it can hold a solid frame rate at really good settings, it's World of Warcraft. It runs on everything, and it runs well on nothing, as the old saying goes. So, overall then, Put your view distance as low as you feel comfortable with, set non-critical preload, uh, that variable, to zero, and keep the add-ons disabled unless you really need them, and you'll be loading in faster than ever. And as an aside, we found out a funny thing with Plunderstorms, so if you're in duos or trios and you want to be the person who controls the parrot, just drop all of your graphics settings to one, because it turns out whoever loads in first gets to control the parrot. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Now you can even min-max how you enter Plunderstorm, because apparently we really are a bunch of sweaty gamers. Okay, that's it for the video. If you want to learn how gearing is working in the new season, check out this one, and there are a great many on the channel as well. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time.